suffered even more as the power steering of their Team Total Evolution Runex failed halfway through stage one, forcing Musa to also tackle stage two without any mechanical help. Start of stage two, it was, was start of the, just on the line. I realized no power steering, and we did that the second busiest stage of the rally without power steering. That was no, I don't recommend that to anybody. It's a close affair at the top of the leaderboard. Harrison Fekken is in a familiar first position, but a determined Conrad Rotenbach is just two and a half seconds adrift, with Mark Ronier breathing down his neck. Jan Habich is within striking distance ahead of Johnny Gemmel, Enzo Kuhn and Charles Wilkin, while Van Dijk rounds off the top ten. After the demanding two opening stages of the Rally of South Africa, the cars and drivers deserve a welcome rest back in the Warburton Service Park. In the Volkswagen camp, everything was going according to plan for Herchen Fekken, but there was still a long fight ahead. Yeah, look, we pushed quite hard in the first two stages, but there's, it's short stages, so you don't take a lot of time. We're leading by three or four seconds. It's still really nothing in it. Conrad Rotenbach is once again the one to take the fight to Fekken and finds himself very close to the lead. We were a bit, a bit slow in the first stage. Uh, the guys caught me sleeping a bit, but um, yeah, well, it feels quite good. We'll do a few little changes now, and uh, this next one's a big one. It's going to be really important, so we'll see what happens. Mark Grunier has already experienced bad luck this year, but third after the opening loop of stages was a good start for the Castrol Toyota driver. Yeah, we, we're there. We've got a couple of gremlins now that the guys are trying to sort out, and hopefully we'll go a little bit quicker in the next one. Charles Wilkin has probably enjoyed the worst luck of anyone in recent times, the Basil Reed Biz Up Fiesta was back on the stages, but Wilkin found the going tough. Yeah, big time. It's uh, struggling a bit there. Um, testing and rallying is a different story. I uh, haven't been rallying for quite a while. To, the guys are pushing hard, so I have to pick up the pace quite a, quite a bit from here. So um, oh, we'll just try and get quicker and quicker as the rally progresses. It's time for the ultimate test. At 56.3 kilometers, Jesse Vale is not only the longest stage of the event, but also the longest stage in South African rallying. It's probably the most infamous stage of the entire championship, and it has decided the outcome of many rallies before. So what exactly is it that makes Jesse Vale such a feared stage? On the one hand, it's the distance. Nearly 60 kilometers is the equivalent of driving from Pretoria to Johannesburg, and that's on narrow and rough forest roads lined with trees, rocks and other obstacles just waiting to take a bite out of your tyres around every corner. On the other hand, it's the level of concentration, mental and physical strength required to reach the end. A cautious approach could result in a very slow time, whereas a full-blown attack could end in retirement. So how do the top drivers approach Jesse Vale? My approach to Jesse Vale is as fast as possible for as long as possible. Flat out. <laughs> and you have to keep it really clean from the start. But you've got to attack, but you've got to find a rhythm. You need to pace yourself and have a clean slate, I think. Concentration, concentration, that's it. Not physically demanding, but it's mentally demanding. Three, two, one, go. Once again, Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson are the first ones to run the Jesse Bell gauntlet as they blast off on this epic stage. Now 500. Exactly two minutes later, BP Ultimate Volkswagen teammates Hergen Fekken and Pierre Arries are the next ones to tackle Jesse Vale. Another two minutes goes by before Johnny Gemmel and Drew Starrock blast off in the first of the Castle Toyotas. Up ahead, Enzo Keen was now well within his stride and driving hard. It seemed like he chose to attack, and so far so good. Triple caution, left five narrow. Now triple caution, left five narrow. Triple here, triple caution. Okay. Ergen and Pierre Aris have dominated this stage in recent years. On both previous occasions, they won Jesse Vell and continue to also win the rally. So Fekin's strategy was crystal clear. But so was Johnny Gemmels. The castle Toyota Aurus was eating up Jesse Vell's kilometers one by one. The easy right, no cut. Repeat, easy right, continues for 30. Takes the easy right, no cut. At the front, Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson were still sweeping the road. In the flat jump to open left eight. Flat here to open left eight. Left eight. Oh, my word. The engine under the bonnet of the BP Ultimate Polo cried enough and Jesse Well had claimed her first victim. From second on the road, Hergen Ficken and Pierre Aris were unaware of their teammates' troubles and soon had their own to worry about. They were going so slow that they had to pull over to let Johnny Gemmel pass. 
The score was now 2-0 in Jesse Bell's favour. Instead of the Volkswagens of Keenan Fekin, the Castle Toyota of Johnny Gemmel and Drew Starrock was the first to arrive at the end of the long Jesse Bell stage. Yeah, he had, a, he had something wrong with his car. He slowed down, let us pass. We were in his dust for a bit, but didn't lose much time. Yeah. And then I saw Enzo a bit further on, parked. With both Fekin and Keen on the sidelines, Jan Habich and Rolf Pitchford were now behind the wheel of the only remaining BP Ultimate Volkswagen Polo. It took a long time for Habich to reach the end, a full minute and a half slower than the only time set by Gemmel so far, and Habich wasn't happy. Meanwhile, Mark Cronier and Robert Paisley were pushing hard in the second Castle Toyota Aurus. This is Cronier's third attempt at completing Jesse Bell in an S2000, and twice he's failed. But only seconds after Habich reached the end, the Aurus screamed into the finish. 37 minutes and 29 seconds. A new fastest stage time by a full 15 seconds. You finished it! Yay! First time! Kronje was the new rally leader, but it all depended on what Conrad Rotenbach and Peter Marsh would do. Kronje already set the benchmark, but the Fiesta looked fast as it raced its way through the notorious Jesse Bell. And that's another one. Three out of the top six cars are all gone within a matter of minutes. This was the opportunity that Charles Wilkin and Greg Godwich were waiting for. The Basil Reed Bizup Ford Fiesta team needed nothing more than a good result after losing two rally cars in less than a year. Halfway through the stage, Wilkin's time was looking good and on the pace. But he too never made it to the end of Jesse Vale. Jesse Vale had already swallowed four out of the top seven contenders. J.P. Damson and Callan Swan were determined not to be part of that statistic. The Total Evolution Runex managed to do so by becoming only the fourth car to reach the end of Jesse Well. So you see what a stage, right? Eh? 50k or 56, we're not used to those kind of stages, eh? Seemed like so far everything was keeping right for Toyota as another Aurus, this time the Pertic version of Hein Lattegan and Johan van der Merwe also emerged from the fearsome Jesse Well stage. Lattegan's time was the third fastest and propelled him to third on the overall standings. Yeah, it went, went well. I mean, I still got tired the last, I would say, 15 k's. It was very difficult to keep on your concentration then. Behind Lattegan, the Salon Group Polo of Tien Schubert and Carl Peskin was the next car to tackle the 56 kilometers. And as with four cars before them, they also failed to reach the end. They stopped to change a punctured wheel, only to find that there was no wheel left to change. <laughs> Jesse Vell was becoming a true battlefield. Nicholas Ryan and Jeff Tyre had no less than two punctures in the Avis and Gabriel Volkswagen Polo. They lost more than seven minutes, but under the circumstances, it didn't seem that bad. But there's carnage out there. Charles Stack, I think he's changing a tyre. Two forks, three forks, half out. Not nice. Toyota's good run on Jesse Bell continued when the Total Evolution Toyota Ranex of Fernando Rueda and Dave Levkovitz emerged from the forest relatively unscathed and with the fifth fastest time. You know, the, the best way I can describe it is, you remember when you went to school and it was the final exams and all of them are okay but there's always one exam that is going to catch you. You know, as you were saying, 20 to go, 10 kilometers to go. It's like you got, you know, you've got through half the paper. And then you got another two questions, and then, ah, I made it, you know. I got my degree. It's almost the same. The next car to complete Jesse Vell was another Toyota, the Burtek Aurus of Fisser Duplessis and Gerard Sneeman. 60 kilometers were more than what Duplessis has done the entire season, and his seventh fastest time moved him up to seventh on the overall standings. But it's an unbelievable stage, eh? The cars are lying next to the road like, uh, looks like uh, the Battle of Waterloo. <laughs> the carnage continued as the motorite polo of Evan Hutchison and Alvin could see a broke a throttle cable. Roadside repairs were enough to get them going again, but 14 minutes were lost. It looks like a bomb went off in there, buddy. It's just cars everywhere. Jesse Vale is not the type of stage that you want to do without power steering, but unfortunately for Jakub van Dijk and Des de Fortier, they had no choice and lost around five minutes in the process. Man is lekker. Ons is klaar met die stage. Die eerste keer van Jesse Vale en ons is weer op. Technicians managed to repair the power steering inside the Total Evolution Ranex of Mohamed Musa and Grant Martin before Jesse Vell, but they were forced to take lateness and got stuck in the dust, losing a further five minutes to their rivals. Jesse Vell was cruel to some, but kind to others. 
Gugu Zulu and new but experienced navigator Cindy Harding enjoyed a trouble-free run in their BP Ultimate Polo and moved into 8th position overall. A remarkable result for a dual drive class A7 car. Just as remarkable was the day one performance of Leroy Porter and Henry Dearlove in the Imperial Toyota runnings. Porter is behind the wheel of a class A6 car, which means a 1600cc front wheel drive. He was both fast and consistent and was rewarded with a fine 10th overall at the end of day one. Jesse Vale has once again lived up to its reputation as a cruel monster. And as in previous years, she's had a huge impact on the overall outcome of the event. This is what the running of Jesse Vale did to the overall leaderboard. The names of Fecken and Rotenbach disappear from the very top of the leaderboard, as does the names of Enzo Kuhn and Charles Wilkin. The new leaderboard looks totally different and is dominated by Toyotas. Mark Cronier takes a comfortable 30-second lead over his teammate Johnny Gemmel, with Latachan now in third. Habich is the only remaining factory Volkswagen in the mix, ahead of Reuter, Damso and Duplessis. Kugu Zulu enters the top ten in a lower-class car, and so does Leroy Polter. Back at the service park, it was time to reflect on the battlefield that was Jesse Vale. Current champion Harkin Fekin's dream of winning three rallies of South Africa in a row is shattered. Uh, about five k's into the stage, um, I just felt that the, one of the lower control arms bent slightly and uh, the wheel was touching the wheel arches. And we tried to nurse it through, but um, after 30 k's it just gave in and the whole wheel fell out completely, so we just stopped. With Enzo Kuhn also missing, Volkswagen lost two cars in one stage. I mean, my opinion is that uh, it's a bit too much for the pace that the guys are running to have stages like this, but that's my view. Conrad Rotenbach's championship aspirations have also taken a serious knock with his second retirement in as many events. Going down a long straight and there was just a little dip in the road and he... Uh, full compression and it broke the gearbox, uh, stuck in sixth gear, we couldn't carry on. It's uh, really disappointing because uh, we were going quite well, I think. This was supposed to be the comeback of the Basel Reed Bizab Ford Fiesta team, but Charles Wilkins' run of extremely bad luck continues. Yeah, unfortunately we, we uh, had some bad luck again. We had a puncture and uh, we thought 10 k's to go we can possibly drive it out just slowly and now uh, we took it careful and then this, the rim split and got jammed and uh, we couldn't turn. So we were stuck there and we couldn't get it off. So that was it. The action for day one at the top of the leaderboard is a thing of the past. So let's break away to look at the battles in the remaining national rally classes. Class A7 is for two litre racing machines, just like S2000s, but they have a little less power and only front wheel drive. Last newcomers Gavin Cronier and Van Aert Schumann never even made it to the start of stage one when the crank sensor in their seasons for Africa Polo failed. Former class champions Chris De Witt and Dean Redlinghuis returned to rallying thanks to backing from sponsors Automark, but the Automark Toyota Ronex was forced to retire after stage one. The John's Way auto doctor Toyota Corolla of Michael Otto and Tommy Dutue at least made it to the start of Jesse Vale, but became another victim when it failed to finish the 56 kilometer long monster. This left the BP Ultimate Polo of Gugu Zulu and Cindy Harding as the only remaining Class A7 contenders, but Zulu was in a fight for a good overall position instead of class honors. As mentioned before, the talented driver drove superbly to occupy eighth on the overall leaderboard after day one. Very confident at this moment in time, things are going well. Got Cindy with me, and it's been absolutely fabulous. As always, Class N4 turned into a two-way battle between the four-wheel drive Subaru Impreza's of Nelspreid brothers, US and Donny Stassen, and the similar machine of Char Kutsi and Pierre Jordan. The top gear motors Subaru of the Stassen's suffered from brake problems on day one, but still managed to lead the Midas Subaru of Kutsi, who was also struggling with problems of his own. Class A6 is for 1600 front wheel drive rally cars. It's also the scene of a very impressive debut here for circuit racing star Leroy Porter and experienced navigator Henry Dearlove. The Imperial Toyota Runnings driver was not only leading Class A6 by a comfortable margin, but also 10th on the overall leaderboard. His nearest rival was the Silverton engineering Hencom auto body Toyota Aorus of Chart Conradi and Tian Rabe, but they were already over a minute back. The Total Evolution Toyota Runex of Craig Trott and Robbie Kutsia completed the top three in Class A6 after a challenging and demanding day one.
A number of really talented young drivers are currently trying to make their mark on the sport's entry-level class, or Class A5. Eastern Cape youngster Morna Janssen van Rensburg and Derek Jacobs got the best of their opposition on day one. The BP Ultimate City Golf opened up a nearly three-minute gap. Former class champion Andre Kleenwerk and Kes Naidu were the early class leaders, but a puncture on Jesse Well forced the BP Ultimate City Golf driver to lose time and the lead. Class A5 championship leaders Ashley Haig Smith and Hilton Orfrey got off to a bad start by picking up a puncture in stage one. The team react. Toyota Yaris driver fought back in Jesse Bell and finished the day third in class. Class N3 is for near standard production cars. The brother and sister team of Megan and Oliver Verlaak win a class of their own and completed the day more than six minutes ahead of nearest rivals Abdul Rahman Amle and Yusuf Ghanif, with the fiesta of Robson Maganesi and Kenny Hill completing the class in three field. A tough day one of the Rally of South Africa comes to close as the sun sets over the Mpumalanga skies. Volkswagen and Ford will have nightmares about Jesse Vale, while Toyota will dream of a first victory in 2010. Or will their dreams also be shattered? Demanding Rally of South Africa.